Unbelievably, the AI started watching TV instead of playing the game. <laughs> It was supposed to solve the maze, but the TV was more interesting. Montezuma's Revenge is a game that haunted AI researchers for years. The most advanced neural networks and training techniques that had been crushing other Atari titles for years couldn't even beat the first level of this game. Why is this game such a challenge? The answer is sparse rewards. An agent trained with reinforcement learning starts off by doing completely random actions in the hopes of getting to a reward. If this works out, the pattern leading to the reward gets reinforced. But what if the sequence of events leading to a reward is very long or complicated? Well, this is the problem of Montezuma's Revenge. In order to score points you have to move, get around enemies, climb on ladders, collect keys and open doors, all in a very specific sequence. The probability of this happening by pure chance is very slim. And this is why agents struggle to make any progress in a game like Montezuma's Revenge. If we compare this to a game like Breakout for example, where you have to destroy blocks by deflecting a ball, in this game the probability of you scoring at least a few points by random chance are very high. And this is why artificial intelligence is able to play superbly in those dense reward environments. So how can we solve this problem of a sparse reward environment? The AI researchers of OpenAI have an answer. And they do it by implementing something that should be familiar to everyone. It is called curiosity. The general idea is to incentivize exploration by rewarding the agent when it visits the unknown. But how can we figure out what is unknown and what is known in a general sense that works across all games and environments? The researchers have a pretty smart solution for this. The agent gets equipped with another neural network that is only responsible for predicting what happens next. This neural network gets trained on all the data the agent observes. Then, every time the agent receives a frame of the game, this network predicts what the next one might look like. If the prediction turns out to be correct, this part of the game is probably well known and explored by the agent, so no reward is given. If the prediction turns out to be way off though, the agent probably has no idea where he is and therefore gets rewarded. This method worked so well that an agent finished the first level of Mario without the researchers assigning any rewards. The agent got to the end of the level just through his curiosity. A funny side effect of curiosity was in this maze level. The level had a noisy TV with random flickering images. The agent could never truly predict what the TV would show next, so it kept on watching. I just love the idea of an eye becoming obsessed with watching television instead of doing what it was supposed to do so much. To be fair though, this is something that isn't really a problem in most other instances or games. Now, with this curiosity mechanism implemented, the AI was able to beat the average human performance in Montezuma's Revenge by a large margin, whereas previous algorithms sometimes couldn't even get a single point without the help of human demonstration. Since then, more researchers like the ones of Uber have found methods to beat Montezuma's Revenge. But this is content for another day. Let me know if you like this style of content. Do you have any topics related to AI that you would like to know more about? Tell me in the comment section. I hope you have enjoyed. I had a lot of fun making this video. Subscribe if you enjoyed. And if you really enjoyed, support me on Patreon.